Hello everyone. Today is Monday, June, and we just had a death in the family. This will be the sixth death of the family for the whole year. Uh, you should be able to see that we decided to come out here today. And Miranda's on the other side of her grandfather's that passed away earlier this year and uh, it's really hard on her I wanted to stay out here and let her be alone for today her, um, but I wanted to read some stuff about death and uh, death isn't something that we can easily easily deal with I have lost almost all of my family my uh my brother's adopted, and that's a whole different situation, but I've lost all my family, and Miranda's starting to go through the same thing. I'm reminded of the verses in Psalm 23, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for the rod and staff will comfort me. You know, we, we all know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift from God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 21 For since by man came death By man came also the resurrection of the dead For as in Adam all die Even so in Christ all shall be made to alive So many times I think we forget about You know what God wants to do for us And how he can reach us Through moments like this Because when we grieve you have to grieve. You have to cry. You have to have times where there are problems. You have to have times where, where there's pressure and, and things. Your patience will be tested. Your thoughts will be tested. And the thing that I say is that when death comes, it's the ultimate test to actually prove to yourself and others where your walk with God really is. Because... Every emotion, signs, senses, everything's heightened. And, and God can calm, calm these troubled waters that happen in your life. Regardless, regardless of what happens, He can strengthen you. I mean, in Exodus, check out Exodus 15 too. The Lord is my strength and song. And He is become, has become my salvation. He's my God. I can't think of any other time where in, in the present day people are not finding about God. People die and things happen and you don't ever know where they're at. You don't ever know what's going on. And, and I take these moments that people need to find out the truth. They need to know about what's going on. You know, God... I don't, I don't like death any more than you do. And it's so difficult. And I, and I question why. I've done that myself. Why, why, why do we have to die? And it's the wages of sin. Everyone is going to die because we've all sinned. We can't get away from that. There's no way you can, you can avoid those things. There's no way it's just going to automatically you know, disappear. It can't. But someone came and paid the penalty of this. His name was Jesus Christ. And he wants to help you. Remember this verse for today. James 1.27 Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. Proverbs 19.17 he that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which has, he will pay to him again. God wants us to reach those that are hurting today. God wants us to take care of those that have lost someone. Do you know someone who has passed away? Have you told them you love them today? Have you helped them out? Some of them are financially stricken. Some of them are mentally broken. And they need you to walk with them. To cry with them. 
to share their pain, to carry their burden. Because when someone dies, they cannot walk that path on their own. I don't care who you are, you cannot deal with death on your own. I know from experience. All I have is an aunt, a brother, and the family that I have for my wife. I know from experience. It is a difficult thing. And as I sit here and I look out this window, and we see Miranda get back up, and you see her right there, she can't do this on her own. She can't be this person that she wants to be. She can. You know, she just can't do it. And we're going to ask her real quick. We're going to ask her. We're going to ask her something. Miranda, wouldn't you have to say that without Christ, dealing with death is almost impossible? Yeah. Wouldn't you have to say that... I hold this, because i got to get my key out. It makes too much noise. Wouldn't you have to say that that you need someone to hold on to? A person to hold on to? To hold your hand? And walk with you? Mm-hmm. Tell, tell, tell the world how difficult dealing with death is, because you just had someone lost today. Tell us. It... You... You kind of want to go with them. That's the first thing I wanted to do. I wanted to go too. Because this world is just so bad. And I'm kind of jealous at times that my papa is in a better place than I am right now. Mm -hmm. I know that's just a piece of marble. And I know that's just a body of a shell under that ground. And that's the real purpose. It is hard to say goodbye. It is hard to believe that when someone passes away, that this ground here is just the shell that remains. Because this man, William E. Steinhauer, Steinhauer, I can never get his name right, was a man of faith. In the community of Waverly, Ohio, everyone knew him by Bill or William. I only knew him for what a year? Two years. Two years I knew this man. <clears throat> I'm bad with dates as you can tell. I'm trying to make this a serious moment because it is. The line the the line that came out when when they were having the viewing was four to five hours. Four or five hours long. One man, one man. He changed the entire community. He brought people to Christ. He, he, he ended up helping kids and bringing them in. You know? And he, the young and old, he broke that barrier of a generational gap. There wasn't one. There were five-year-olds that liked him. There were 86-year-olds that liked him. What will you be remembered for when you pass away? Where are you in your walk with Christ? What are you doing? What are you doing to make a difference? This man, Bill Steinhauer, our relative, made a difference and reached a community where hundreds of people showed up to remember him. Not just because he was a friend, but I talked to some of these people. And they ended up telling me, yes, this man changed my life. He helped me in my dire straight moments. I remember someone had a problem and they needed money he was there to help support there was another person they, 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 he just needed someone to talk to and a woman who wanted a friend he was a friend to the friendless and brought hope to the hopeless can you be remembered for that? I think Christ wants to do that in our lives he wants to transform us from the inside out and make us what God wants us to be